This is Ben with bkashaaudio.com. In this video, I'll be looking at a MIDI control script called CliffX for Ableton Live. This script allows you to extend the functionality of your MIDI controller without having to know how to program MIDI remote scripts in Ableton. As an example, I'll be using an Akai MPD32. The default Ableton Live mapping for the MPD32 only maps control bank A. These control bank A controls, buttons 1 through 8, adjust record arm. So by pressing 1 through 8, I can adjust which channel is control armed via the MPD32. However, the additional control banks, such as B and C, don't have any functionality in Ableton Live. We can add this functionality using CliffX. You can download it from the Beatwise Network forums. I'll include a link in the video description. The documentation is pretty good, and it's very straightforward to install. You simply install it into your MIDI Remote Scripts folder in the Ableton Live directory. In order to configure it, there's a file called User Settings. I'll open up my User Settings file. It's well laid out, and again, the documentation is very easy to follow. And what I'm concerned with right now is a section called User Controls. Now, what I'd like to do with the MPD is I'd like to add some common shortcuts that I use to control banks B and C. You can see in the text file, the user settings text file, that they lay out how to map these. So the, essentially the format is you have a variable, which can be anything as long as it's clear and represents uh, what you're mapping. So in this case, I named it B2 underscore S1. This represents bank 2, aka bank B, control bank B, and S1, which is the text below the button that I want to map. And then you store the following values in that variable, whether it's a note on or a CC value. I know that these buttons send a CC value, so I'll enter in CC. Then I'll place in the MIDI channel. So everything in control bank B is on MIDI channel 2. Next, I place the actual MIDI CC number that's being sent from the MPD. You can determine this a number of different ways. One is to load a program such as MIDIOX, which allows you to monitor incoming MIDI, press the button on the MPD32, and see what message is coming in. Note that these messages that I'm entering in are in decimal format, not in hexadecimal format. So be sure if you're using MIDIOX, to set it to decimal format. An even easier way with this particular controller is if you press a button and you look at the LCD screen, it will show you the MIDI channel as well as the MIDI note that is being sent in decimal format. So if I press S1 when I'm in control bank B, it'll show a 32 on screen. And the final part of this is the actual command that I want this to execute in Ableton. Now, in the documentation for CliffX, they have a nice summary of all the available user controls that can be mapped. And you can look through that to find what you want to map. In this particular example for uh, S1 in Bank B, I want to map the faders to Bank Left by a value of 8. And then for button 2, I want to map the faders to bank to the right by a value of 8. This is very similar to the bank control in uh, Mackie and Huey protocol. So as an example of this, I'll open up an Ableton session, and I have my cursor on the first track, the drums track. And if I move my fader, you can see that the fader in Ableton Live moves. And then if I move the eighth fader on my MPD, you can see the 8th track fader moves. Now if I want to bank that over, press S2 to bank over by a value of 8. 
and then return to control bank A and move my faders. And now I can control the next eight faders in my session. If I want to move left and right and select the next or previous track, I can switch to control bank B and press S3 or S4 and that will bank me left and right by a single track. And then I have device controls for devices on a track. So we have device lock, device enable, disable, and device left and right. So for example, if I want to get to my vocal group, I can bank over by a track. And then if I want to select a specific device on that track, I can use S7 and S8 to select a particular device. I can enable or disable that device by using S6. If I want to turn my device on and off, and then if I want to lock my control surface to that device, I can press S5, and that will lock the control surface there. So those are all the functions in Control Bank B. If I move over to Control Bank C, I have some common uh, plugins that I load, so that way I don't have to search for them in the Ableton Live browser. So S1 is an EQ8, Two is an auto filter, compressor, reverb, and so on. So if I want to add an EQ8, I can simply change over to Bank C, press S1, and I have an EQ8, auto filter, compressor, and reverb. The next two functions are an undo and redo, or redo and undo, rather. That's nice and convenient to not have to press Control Z to undo. And then the final two functions are the metronome on and off. So this will toggle the metronome on and off. And then S8, the last button, will turn overdub mode on and off, which is useful if you're recording, uh, say, a clip in uh, clip view mode and you want to overdub something onto it. Pretty common if you're beat making and you're working in little four bar loops. So this is a great MIDI remote control script. Uh, it works not just with the MPD32, again it'll work with any MIDI controller and allows you access to functions that you can't normally MIDI map or MIDI learn in Ableton Live, such as being able to call up uh, effects and to lock your control surface to a specific device. If you enjoyed this tutorial, be sure to subscribe and visit my website for more tutorials and free content.